Baruch here with GenConnect.com speaking today with Robert Lustig. How are you, sir? Doing well, thank you. Thank you for being here. It's hard to uh, argue with Aspen, you know? Nothing wrong about Aspen. <laughs> you just came out with a book on obesity. Mm -hmm. Take us through some of the key findings about something that really is plaguing so many Americans, so many young Americans today. Well, I can sum up the book in one phrase. A calorie is not a calorie. If you believe that a calorie is a calorie, and I know where that comes from, it comes from the first law of thermodynamics, that if you eat more than you burn, you'll gain weight. If you eat less than you burn, you will lose weight. Guess what? It hasn't worked. Diet and exercise has not fixed this problem anywhere in the world. And the reason is because a calorie is not a calorie. There are many, many different uh, arguments against a calorie is a calorie, and I take people through that in the book. But once you accept that as a precept, then it becomes a question of, okay, which calories are okay and which ones are not? And that's where the food industry has basically taken us for a ride. And unfortunately, that ride has ended in Medicare being broke by the year 2024. You mentioned Medicare. Do you believe that obesity is a disease? So just three days ago, the American Medical Association sanctified obesity as a disease. Number one, they're late to the party. HHS had sanctified obesity as a disease back in 2004 and it hasn't changed anything, didn't change any of the insurance reimbursements, didn't change any of the obesity uh, statistics. The reason they did this right now is because Obamacare is coming and they want to be able to say economically, we're going to have our physicians paid for obesity, which makes some sense because otherwise they wouldn't get paid. Problem is, what are the physicians going to do? The same thing they've been doing up till now, which is eat less, exercise more, which we've clearly shown over the last 30 years doesn't work. Worse yet, here's a little nugget of truth that takes this whole issue down. 20% of the obese population is completely metabolically normal. They have no metabolic dysfunction, they will live a completely normal life, die at a completely normal age, not cost the taxpayer anything, they're just fat. Do they have a disease? What if you were five foot two and you were short? Would you have a disease? So you're so, saying that being fat is not something that needs to be cured necessarily, but it could be equivalent to having brown hair, to being a certain height, to having a certain shoe size. The point is that if you're fat and sick, and certainly more fat people are sick, then you've got a problem, but it's the sickness, it's the metabolic disease, the diabetes, the hypertension, the lipid disorders, the cardiovascular disease, the cancer, the dementia. That's what's draining the healthcare resources. And guess what? Thin people get it too. Up to 40% of the normal weight population have the same exact chronic metabolic diseases as the obese. But no one's calling them a disease, except they are. But so you just mentioned a 40% number though. Shouldn't we be looking at this preemptively? Of course, while someone's fat, if they're not diseased, they're not diseased. But you're more likely to get to have diabetes, lipid disorders, if you are obese. Absolutely, so people need to be screened and I'm totally for that. But the fact is the normal weight population has to be screened. And that's not happening right now. Right now you go into a doctor's office, they say, well, you're normal weight, you get a clean bill of health. That's a big problem. Where do hormones come into all of this? Uh, they're driving all of this. They're the, they're, they're the straw that dirt stirs the drink. The fact is that obesity is leptin resistance. If your brain can see your leptin, you're not obese because you will burn off the extra energy. But if your brain can't see leptin, then you're going to keep gaining weight because your brain thinks you're starving. The question is, what caused leptin to not work anymore? And I can sum that up in one word, insulin. Insulin blocks leptin signaling. So how come we're all hyperinsulinemic? How come we're all over the top in terms of our insulin levels? And the answer there, one word too, sugar. And that's why I've said that this is the most pervasive and yet the most actionable item in our food supply that has to be addressed. Sugar. Sugar. Right now, we consume 22 teaspoons of added sugar per day. The American Heart Association says we should be reducing that down to six teaspoons a day for women and nine teaspoons a day for men. Problem is, we can't. Reason? 600,000 food items in the American food supply, 80% of them are spiked with added sugar. And of that sugar, one half of it is in foods we didn't even know had it, like salad dressings barbecue buns, barbecue sauce, hamburger buns, hamburger meat, yogurt, things that we thought were healthy, 
which aren't. What about fruit sugar, naturally occurring sugars? Right. So fruit sugar, fructose, comes from fruit, and certainly fruit has sugar in it, but fruit has something else that's way more important. It's called fiber. And fiber mitigates the negative aspects of sugar because it delays the absorption of sugar from your gut through your intestine into your bloodstream so that your liver doesn't get overwhelmed and so that you can handle the metabolic onslaught. In addition, fiber moves the food through the intestine faster so you get the satiety signal sooner so you won't eat that second portion. In other words, when you eat fructose in fruit, it's self-limiting. When you drink it as juice, it's not. Are we better off having sugar substitutes like Splenda, Stevia? Short answer, we don't know. And there's a reason we don't know. The FDA doesn't demand those studies be done. The food industry doesn't want to do those studies because they're expensive and they can't help their sales. And the NIH won't pay for those studies because they say that's the food industry's job. So, no data. Thank you so much, Robert. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And for more with Robert Lustig, be sure to check out GenConnect.com.